Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Ocean Atmosphere and Climate 3.3 Christchurch, air temperature in normal years. Um, we are going to apply what we have learned in chapters one, two, and so far in three to the climate of Christchurch. Um, we're going to be looking at its latitude, we're gonna be looking at uh, the currents that are going by Christchurch, and we're going to be looking at the prevailing winds that affect Christchurch as well. Um, and we're going to be putting together a model that shows what affects the temperature of Christchurch. And uh, then we're going to start start really looking into this El Nino thing and seeing what might actually be going on to affect the temperature of Christchurch, New Zealand. Why is it decreasing? Okay, so let's go ahead and start to uh, uh, start with a warm up. And the warm-up is going to ask you to uh, go and review the model that you made in the last lesson, in 3.2. Uh, Hang on one second. If you recall, you were supposed to um, put a couple currents on the map and show how prevailing winds and continents affect the direction of those currents. Oh, what do you know? Here's the warm-up question based on what your model shows, what affects ocean currents. You may choose more than one. Um, I, I think I just gave it away. Uh, prevailing winds, we said prevailing winds are what actually uh, start that ocean current. Prevailing winds are strong winds that blow over long distances, uh, usually in the same direction. And those winds, as they blow, they're pushing that water right along with it, um, that ocean surface water. Um, continents, because we said when uh, the ocean current if it runs into the edge of a continent, it can't just keep going over the continent. It has to go left or right. Uh, so the direction of that ocean current changes because it runs into a continent and it has to turn. Okay. Um, let's talk about this too. Rivers have nothing to do with um, ocean currents. Well, maybe the Amazon could affect an ocean current. That's interesting. The outlet. I don't know. I would, I would, I would want to look into that. Does the Amazon... Uh, affect the course of the natural ocean currents that are going by uh, South America. Huh, interesting. Now I want to look that up. But rivers, even though sometimes uh, I have referred to ocean currents as like almost like rivers of water in the ocean, um, we wouldn't say that rivers have any effect on uh, ocean currents. Also the moon. Uh, this is a common misconception um, that people think the moon has something to do with ocean currents. Uh, the moon does have to do with tides, um, and so I think that's probably one of the reasons why people refer to the moon as something that might affect ocean currents, because it does affect the ocean, but not the currents in the ocean, okay? So, um, well, there's your warm-up for you. Let's go ahead and jump into uh, tab number two here. We're going to be using the modeling tool, and uh, we're going to be using the modeling tool to show um, the things that are affecting the climate of Christchurch, New Zealand. So let's go ahead and uh, read the directions here. Modeling the air temperature in Christchurch. Launch the ocean atmosphere and climate modeling tool activity 3.3 Christchurch model. When your model is complete, answer the question and press hand in. Let's look at our goal. What is our goal? Before we even jump into the model, it says create a model to explain Christchurch's air temperature during a normal year. Okay, so when we click on the modeling tool, it actually brings us to this right here. Um, it already has an ocean current on here. Um, you still can change some of the direction of the ocean current if you want. Um, and look, we have these prevailing wind arrows, okay? We have one of these uh, energy transfer boxes uh, for Christchurch to show what is actually happening. Um, how is the water affecting the air? How is the uh, land affecting the air? How is the air affecting the water and the land? That's for you to include. Uh, so let's take a look at what we're supposed to do. Model how prevailing winds affect the direction of the current. Hey, here's a little hint. If the current is traveling in this direction, that probably means that the wind is also traveling in that direction. Just gonna go ahead and throw that out there. That's probably a good possibility. Um, well, what about winds going the other way? Uh, I would say, because we haven't really looked at this in a whole lot of detail, um, go ahead and put another uh, band of wind, the prevailing wind going in this direction right here. Okay. Um, and then that should be, yeah, that should be good uh, to start off. What else does it ask us to do? It says complete the information about Christchurch with energy transfer arrows. 
add thermometers to show surface and air temperatures. So I'm gonna leave that to you. Um, and you're gonna click on this editing icon right here and you will be able to add your energy transfer arrows um, showing uh, energy that's coming from the sun, any energy that might be transferred from land or water, and also uh, your temperature, your thermometers, okay? Uh, add thermometers for water, land, and air. How do I know what temperature the land is, Mr. Wigan? Oh, well, um, you can gauge that based on um, latitude, can't you? Um, so, all of these temperatures are going to be relative to one another, right? Uh, the uh, temperature of the ocean current compared to the land, compared to the air, um, and then you're going to be showing what is happening. What is the change that is actually going on there? Okay, uh, place as many wind lines as you need your model. Hey, we already uh, showed what those wind lines are. And then uh, down here, how does your model explain what determines Christchurch's air temperature during a normal year? Tell me what's going on. Um, you filled out that box with all the energy transfer arrows. Why'd you put those there? Why'd you, why'd you show that the energy was transferring in one direction or another? Um, but give me a give me a description here of what is actually going on. This is this is a great way for you to show your understanding of uh, the the factors that affect the temperature of a location. Okay, so uh, make sure you uh, uh, press hand in on your modeling tool. You'll press hand in up here when you're all done, and uh, then we'll move to the next uh, tab. All right, next, uh, we're jumping into the sim. We are on tab number three, and we are investigating the effect of changing winds. Um, and here's our question. What happens when prevailing winds change? What? Mr. Wigan, I thought prevailing winds were like pretty consistent, and they don't change. Like, they're always blowing in the same direction. Well, most of the time, they are. But sometimes they do change. And this is going to start getting us more into... Um, what is happening in Christchurch during an El Nino year, okay? So keep that in mind as we uh, do this simulation. So it says, use the sim to learn more about how changes in prevailing winds can affect the amount of energy in the air. When we're talking about the amount of energy in the air, what are we really talking about? We're talking about temperature, right? So it says, launch the ocean atmosphere and climate sim, go to wind map mode and select surface for temperature, uh, temperature view, press play to observe the currents and then read about the two missions, okay? So how do we do that? For the mode, we go up here on the upper left. We want to go to wind map, load wind map, yes. And then what does it say for temperature? Surface, right? So now we have the surface, and then it said click play. So we have the winds represented by these curving arrows on the map. Uh, we can see the currents as they're animated, these little uh, whitish grayish lines moving all along the map. And then the relative temperatures, uh, actually not relative, look, it actually gives us uh, uh, numbers uh, to attach those. Um, and you can see that on these locations. Now, uh, it said, once you do that, read about the two missions. There are two missions. Um, hey, do one, okay? You're supposed to be working with a partner on this. If you want, hey, go go email, email your buddy, email your friend, uh, just open up a chat and do this with another person. Um, but each of you, the idea is that you would each do one of these missions. If you're feeling ambitious, do both. Do both. It's going to be uh, great for you. Either way, mission planning. Each partner will uh, make a plan to complete one of the missions. Tell your partner about the sim mission you plan to complete. Um, where will you place your sensor? What changes will you make to the wind? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even read the missions. Mission number one. Find a location that has a warm ocean current passing by. Make a change to, the, to wind so the air temperature of the location becomes colder. All right, so what do they mean by that? Uh, a location where there's a warm ocean current. Well, hey, look, look where, look right here. This looks like a warm ocean current. Um, you know, any anywhere you see, oh, here's a nice warm ocean current right here. It looks like it's going up. Um, and what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to make a change, oh, hi, Drake, uh, to the air temperature of the location so it becomes cooler. Uh-oh, it's okay, Drake. We'll go outside later, buddy. Um, mission two, find a location that has a cold ocean current. Uh, passing by, make a change to the wind so the air temperature of the location becomes warmer. So it's just the opposite. Um, how do I make a change to the wind? Hmm. Oh, I see right down here. Wind direction, I can go normal or I can click reverse. All right. And let's see what else we actually have to do here. Um, you already said which one you're going to do. I will complete mission one or mission two. Okay. And then once you have a plan, complete, complete the mission you agreed on. 
follow these steps, record your data, and finally answer the questions about your results. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to place a sensor on the location you selected. Remember, you're selecting a location that has either a warm current passing by or a cold current passing by it. And then press play if you pause the sim. Wait for the air temperature to stabilize. You'll notice that the air temperature is changing. And then when it says stabilize, what does that mean? It just means it's done changing, right? Uh, record the initial air temperature. So this is before we've done anything to the winds. We have not clicked that reverse button. So make sure you record your uh, location here, your initial air temperature here. And then number four, make a change. This is where you click that reverse button. Wait for the air temperature to stabilize again. Again, you're gonna notice that the air temperature is stable, is changing again. If it's not changing, we've done something wrong and we need to go back and start over. Uh, record the changed air temperature and you'll record that right here in this box. Share your results with your partner. You, we can share them in class. If your mission was not successful, make a new plan and try again, like we just said, and answer the question. So don't forget this part here. What changes did you make in order to complete this mission? You reversed the direction of the prevailing winds. That's, that's what you did. And then answer this question. What change did you finally make that changed the air temperature of your location? Um, go into a little bit more detail when you answer this question. Uh, state which mission you completed and then answer this question. Why did changing the wind affect the air temperature? Why? Why did changing the wind affect the air temperature? And let me just show you really quick. Uh, when you put a location sensor down, um, you can see this is the uh, uh, latitude and longitude, okay? Um, and that's, you will record the latitude um, when you're recording your data. And uh, do you need to record the longitude too? Yeah. I think it's just the latitude that they're asking for. No, they want both, they want both. So you'll record both. Um, and then of course it shows you the temperatures here. Um, all right, so uh, complete the sim mission, answer the question and questions, and then let's move on to the homework, which I'm gonna click on right now. You can pause and finish the sim and then start again. The homework we are reading about, ooh, deep ocean currents driven by density. So what, what do you mean deep ocean currents? Well, the currents that we've been talking about, these are surface currents, okay? And they're driven by prevailing winds. And we get that. And they're, uh, the direction of these currents is based on the winds and based on um, the edges of the continents, right? What about deep ocean currents? They're, they're a little bit different. Um, so, we're going to read this article and uh, find out a little bit about deep ocean currents. Um, you're going to answer this question, what causes the movement of deep ocean currents, and how does water sink to the bottom of the ocean and then rise to the surface again? Uh, so, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I, I want to know the answers to these questions, so I'm going to read that article. Um, hey, once you're done with the homework and you've answered those questions, uh, you're done, and we will see you next time.